If questions like this one are eating up too much of your time, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover a three-step system for dealing with command of evidence questions on the SAT. As you probably know, command of evidence questions are split into quantitative and textual. Let's start with quantitative questions. So with these types of questions, ideally, we're not going to have to actually look at the visual aid. So here we see we've got this copper production chart. Hopefully we can get away with not even looking at it, but let's find out. Step one is going to be to work backwards from the blank space to determine what the example or the statement is that you are going to be referring to. Let me show you what I mean. So in this one, we've got several states saw rapid growth in the production of this resource, for example. Okay, so then I should probably just double check to see what this resource is. I go backwards to the sentence before and we see copper. So I know that I'm trying to support the idea that several states saw a lot of growth in copper. Step two is to eliminate answers that do not support the example or the statement. In this case, it says for example, right? So let's go ahead and do that. The rise in copper production in Michigan slowed. That is not what I'm looking for. Remember, I'm trying to find rapid growth in several states. Montana and Arizona produced more copper than Michigan. That's comparing the state's production rather than saying there was growth in a lot of states. Fewer than 1 million pounds were produced in Arizona, no. And then D, copper production rose significantly for Arizona, Michigan, and Montana. Beautiful, that's exactly what I was looking for. Circle my answer. Now I know what you're thinking, you said there were three steps. Where's step three? Well, step three, which is often unnecessary, is to eliminate answers that are not true based on the visual aid. So. Like I said, ideally, we don't have to go to this step. Here, we didn't even have to look at the chart, but if you end up with two answers that match the example or the statement or the hypothesis or whatever, that's when you'll actually look in the chart and you'll eliminate any answers that are actually not true. The trap that a lot of students will fall into is they're trying to see each answer, whether or not it's true, and usually most of the answers are going to be true, but it's not about that. It's about making that connection to the example or the statement. All right, let's look at one that is rated as a higher difficulty level. Now, I want you to actually try and use the steps we just talked about to solve this one on your own first. So pause the video, give it a go. All right, let's see what's going on here. So I'm going to start backwards from the blank space again. We've got Main contributors to the world's urbanization since 1970 have been countries like Algeria, whose population went from blank. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. It's more of a statement than an example. Um, so it's saying urbanization, countries like Algeria, whose population went. So I know I should be focusing on Algeria, and I'm looking specifically for urbanization. So some sort of population growth in urban areas, I imagine. Let's go through and eliminate anything that doesn't support that idea. Around 50% urban in 1970 to 90% urban in 2020. So that seems like a pretty big jump, so that sounds good. Less than 40% urban in 1970 to around 90% urban in 2020. So that's even better. Uh, and I can tell that one of those is not going to be true, so we will indeed end up going to step three for this one. Less than 20% urban in 1970 and more than 50% urban in 2020. Around 40% urban in 1970 to more than 70% urban in 2020. So this is a perfect example where you're going to need step three because all of these support what I'm looking for, so I can't eliminate any of them. The good news is I know I'm focusing on Algeria. So I'm just going to look at the little triangle boy here. Uh, little triangle boy starts, where is it? It looks like around 40. So I can get rid of A, I can get rid of C. Less than and around both work. So I do need to see where it ends in 2020. And if we look here, 2020, it's going to be around 70, a little bit higher than 70. So then it's D. 
And just like that, we got our answer using those three steps once again. All right, moving into textual command of evidence, we are still going to have only three steps, and it's similar to the quantitative questions. Step one for these questions is going to be to identify if you are supporting or challenging the claim or the hypothesis. Every single question is going to have something about directly supporting or challenging a claim, a hypothesis, or some word meaning claim or hypothesis. This one, I'm being asked to support the claim. So I know I should choose an answer that is in line with the claim rather than the opposite of the claim. Make sense? Step two is to find the claim or hypothesis. So here I'm going to browse. I'm not going to necessarily read the entire thing. This is where we can save some time. I just want to look for the word claim or the word hypothesis, something like that. Usually if it says claim, the word claim will actually be in the paragraph. And sure enough, the researchers claim that giraffes use these sounds to communicate when it's not possible for them to signal one another visually. Okay, so giraffes use these sounds, and then I might want to skim to see what sounds, mm, low-pitched humming sound. So these are things that I'm paying attention to, not possible to signal. Okay, so step three is going to be pretty much the same as step two for those quantitative ones. I'm going to eliminate answers that do not support the claim. So A says, giraffes have an excellent sense of vision and can see in color. <laughs> that says nothing about using the sound, so A is out. The giraffes only produce the humming sounds at night when they couldn't see one another, so that totally makes sense. I'm going to keep that one. Wild giraffes have never been recorded making humming sounds. That definitely doesn't match. Researchers observed other animals in zoos humming. That's a very cool idea. I would like to see animals humming, but that's not the answer we're looking for, so it's going to be B for this one. All right, and again, we've got one that is rated at a higher difficulty level, and we're going to use those same three steps. Go ahead and try this on your own first, pause the video, and let's take a look. So at this time, we again have support, so we know we're going to support the hypothesis, um, and it uses the word hypothesis. Let's see if we can find a hypothesis. Uh, we have, they have hypothesized sail-like structure running down the back of this. So this, this structure of this dinosaur improved success underwater pursuits, improved underwater pursuits of prey species capable of making quick evasive movements. All right, so I know I can go back. I've kind of got in my head that it's making quick movements, but if I need that detail, I, I just know to go back to that sentence. I think the big thing here is it improved their success in underwater pursuits. And I'm going to go through and start eliminating answers that do not match that idea. The model with a sail took significantly less time to complete a sharp turn while submerged in the model without a sail. All right, and you know what? <laughs> it looks like it is important. So I'm going to also highlight quick evasive movements because that first one, that makes sense. A, a quick turn would be important for chasing after something with quick evasive movements, right? And we know that the sail should help with that. So A actually makes sense here. I'm going to keep A. The model with a sail displaced significantly more water than the model with the sail did. Wait, what? Oh, without a sail. <laughs> um, it's not about displacing water, so B is out. The model with the sail had significantly less battery power. I don't care about battery power. The model with the sail took significantly, ooh, significantly longer to travel a specified distance while submerged than a model without a sail did. So that one seems like it could work as well, right? So let's look at the difference between A and D. A is talking about a specifically a sharp turn, whereas D is talking about traveling a specified distance. The part that we were focusing on was quick evasive movements, not necessarily quick prey in general. I would argue that a sharp turn is a quick evasive movement. So for that reason, I'm going to eliminate D and A is going to be my answer. If you're ready to get some more practice in, you can actually sign up for a free proctored exam with Revolution Prep using the link in the description. And for more insights on improving your English score, go ahead and check out this video right here. It's going to cover five tips you can use to improve your score in the SAT English sections.